Yo, what's up? Hello, gamer. How's it going? Going good, bro. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Just vibing. I uh, got back from doing a bunch of uh, Christmas stuff, so working on the next video now. How about yourself? What are you up to? <sighs> doing good, yeah. I, I had a bunch of shit I had to do today for like video stuff, and I was like... I'm just going to stream instead, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm waiting for dates to confirm, but I'm pretty, I'm 98.9% .9 sure I'm going to this. Uh, Destiny is debating Alex Jones in Texas in like five days, so I'm going to fly there. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. Dang, that'll be funny. It should be really funny. Uh, hopefully not too controversial, because I want to film it and put it on YouTube. But yeah, it should be funny. Um, are they debating uh, anything in specific or just in general? Actually, they probably are, and I just haven't looked, but it is like a scheduled debate or whatever, so they, there probably is like a real debate going on that I just don't know about. Um, but to be honest, uh, I'm less concerned with whatever the actual issue is anyway, because I kind of don't care. Right, you, you just want to see a fight. I just want to see, yeah, just the content. That's how it is for every political thing for me. It's like, when I see a global conflict going on, I'm like, damn, that sucks, but I can't wait to see the arguing on YouTube about it, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so whenever, whenever like, stuff's going going on in Israel or stuff's going on in what's the other thing oh yeah like Russia I'm just like well I can't wait to see destiny stream about it <laughs> but that's like, about how can, this be... how can this benefit me exactly how, how can I find this suffering and death entertaining <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah. yeah, everyone thinks it's like some global elite that controls the world and makes wars, but it's actually Turkey Tom who's just grinding for his second channel. Dude, I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to profit off of misery. That's really it. Um, yeah. What are you working like on for videos? Like a true capitalist. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, this next video, the one I hopefully will have out by Monday, is just the next part of the cryptid series I've been doing. Uh, but at the same time, I'm working on a pretty long Jonestown video. Gotcha. The Jonestown Massacre. Yeah, yeah. What's the deal That's, with that? Uh, what happened there? It's a it's a wild case. It's like you're familiar with like the end of it, right? Like 900 people drank the Kool Aid, mm -hmm. some compound in South America. Yeah. Uh, what happened before that was like 20 years, or actually like an entire lifetime of this convincing people to join his church. It effectively began uh, posturing himself as God. Uh, and like, man, it, it there most of the time when I see like cult leaders or whatever. I see them as like, okay, they were insane or maybe they were a mentally ill individual who convinced others that what they're talking about was right. But Jim Jones is the one where I think he was just like evil from the beginning. Every ounce of him is the devil. Like I, I'm really like when this guy was seven years old, he would kill like dogs and cats in his neighborhood so that he could perform quote unquote healings on them. And when they didn't come back to life, he would blame his family and friends for not having enough faith in him. Like this guy was awful from the get go. Right. Um, and that's what eventually led to the the massacre that happened at Jonestown. So yeah, uh, making a video about that. I, I don't understand what these cults, the, the biggest, most perplexing thing to me is like, I guess I could understand like four or five people. Like what was the, what was the Charles Manson cult? It was like maybe, maybe 10 girls, maybe. Uh, there, there was like 10 involved with the killings. There were more people than that that lived at a spawn ranch. It was, I, th I want to say around 40 maybe total, like people who live there. But yeah, there's like 10 girls who actually took part in the killings. So it's it's super interesting to me. Um, I've never understood this to try to understand how so many people become perplexed. I mean, like with Jonestown, you said 900 people wound up. Did 900 yeah. people die? Uh, I think it was 936 dead. Yeah. Okay. How can the majority nine, of that if was there's, died. If there's the majority 900 of them, it's not like they were all crazy people, right? It's not like every single one of them was totally insane. Some of them probably were normal people at one point. It's, it's completely befuddling to me to understand how people can go from living a normal life you know having a family living in the suburbs to being a part of this religious cult and thinking that they need to follow the word of this one guy i mean i feel like i feel like just pure charisma doesn't explain that to me from from um the guy that was running the call well, his name was it's fascinating jim jones uh it's fascinating because you know every case is different specifically with jones he would like he prayed on people who needed some kind of out from society so like he had his rise in like the 50s and 60s so the primary people that he got to join his church was like minority groups. So a lot of black people, Native American people, 
those who like had felt wrong by society and for good reason, but he convinced them that he was the solution to that. And what's really like evil about it is Jim Jones did a lot of quote unquote good work for minority groups around his area. Like when he was in Indianapolis, he was uh, credited on the news for being one of the people pushing civil rights in the city. And then from there, he spends the next 20 years convincing them that he's effectively their god, that he's more than that. So the, the manipulation is strong. And also the fact that, you know, obviously a lot of people who fall prey to cults like that aren't the most intelligent. Um, you know, they they maybe have uh, some kind of mental disorder or at least emotional condition that leads to this. Because there's a lot more than 900 people who were with him for a while and then left once they saw how extreme it was getting. So there, so there were people nine... who got out, probably? Was it like yeah, thousands like that, who all got together, out? Yeah, like his, he had two of the biggest churches in Indianapolis and then later San Francisco. Uh, as far as like congregation that came through his church, he probably had at least, you know, 100,000 people pass through his doors. So he had a physical church? Yes, he did. So originally he was in Indianapolis uh, and then he lost money there over, it's, it's a whole thing like he should go to South America because he hated the United States so he ended up losing the church in Indianapolis opened up a new one in San Francisco and he was like such a big deal in both of those cities that at both of them he was elected to local government um he was great friends with a lot of actors and like uh politicians in the area um like the dude the dude was very high polluting and he used that to like garner favors with people in the local committees and stuff like that to get what he wants. So yeah, he had, he had like hundreds of thousands of people come through his church. It's just 900 who agreed to go with him to South America uh, to start his compound. 900 is just so many people to uproot their lives. I mean, they were all Americans, right? To uproot their lives in the United States and then go to South America to this compound. Um, and the idea that people who, I mean, I assume there were probably a lot of families there. They would, they would think that it's probably a wise choice to take their entire family from their you know, relatively normal life in the U.S. to living in this like little village down in South America. That is, it's just, it's just, it's, it's like inconceivable to me. I guess maybe I just haven't met enough people that will be susceptible to cults or maybe I don't realize how easy it is to get roped into one of these things, but it just, uh, it sounds completely insane. And I mean, so astronomically unlikely to me too, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, for example, Jim Jones was super fascinated with like Hitler, Stalin, individuals like that. And he kind of stole their playbook for a lot of how they got people to be so radicalized for them. Like you take people who have a problem and then you place yourself as a solution to that problem. And then after you're their savior, then you can start deciding who the enemy is and they'll believe you. So like Jim Jones was a hardcore socialist and he had convinced everyone that uh, America was going to be the end of the world. After he starts to convince people that like he's the solution to their problem, he starts to tell them, well, America's really the issue. And like I said, the majority of his congregants were like, you know, minorities, people who had, you know, legitimate problems with the American government in the 60s. So he starts to say, um, well, if we can get away from this government, we'll all be better off. So he uses that to convince them to leave the U.S. And then once he's there, he starts to tell them that the government's coming to get them, that the, the capitalist evil won't let them leave. So we have to fight back. And to give you an idea of like how far removed these people were, he put it to a vote in the camp like a couple of years before the, the mass suicide. If they were to be attacked by America, they either commit mass suicide they run away into the jungle, they fight back, uh, or they uh, seek asylum in a socialist country like Russia or North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone voted for seek asylum, and then as an immediate backup, mass suicide. Jesus. Uh, so when yeah, right before the massacre happened, he had sent letters. Uh, it's actually debated if he sent the letters or not. Some people argue that he didn't. Um, but he sent letters to Russia, North Korea, seeking asylum for the community, and they didn't answer. So everyone willingly drank the Kool Aid, killed themselves. They had actually rehearsed the mass suicide on five separate occasions, and in each of them had said that they were doing it for real this time. Like America's attacking, drink it, and everyone does. And then Joan says, this was just a test to prove your loyalty. But nothing was so even are... no, nothing was even like directly happening to them in terms of conflict with the United States government, right? I mean, it was it was obviously they were being oppressed, but um, it wasn't like the CIA was coming in and like, you know, choking them out. There, and so them what was happening is there was a bunch of uh, like journalists and stuff who believed that Jones was holding people against their will. So periodically, and also the, the legal route, the loophole that the feds use 
was uh, Jim Jones was taking people's like social security checks. They were because they were still U.S. citizens, so they were getting like checks from the government and then giving those over to Jones. So the FBI did several investigations uh, to Jonestown to confirm that these people weren't being held against their will. So every now and then, feds would show up. They would ask individuals, "Are you here of your own accord? Is anyone harming you? Do you need to get out?" And every time, the all everyone they interviewed said, "No, I'm here on my own will. I choose to be here." Uh, so, but Jones was using those visits as fuel to say any day now they're going to send tanks and troops and they're going to kill us all. The nail in the coffin that led to the mass suicide is there was a couple, I forget their names right now, I think it was like the, the Ramsey family or something. There was a couple who had left Jonestown, they had left by boat or whatever, traveled out locally, and they had left a child in Jonestown. So they were arguing with Jonestown like a custody battle effectively to get their kid back. And this became like a whole big deal in the news. So a U.S. representative went down there with a news crew to do a whole like effectively expose about Jonestown. And then when they get down there, they're doing the interview and everything's fine. And then one of the members passes one of the cameramen a note that says we're being held against our will. Help us get out. So then it immediately becomes, OK, we got to rescue who we can. So the representative is like, all right, uh, sorry, God, the U.S., see you all. And Jones picks up on this, interrogates people, finds out someone slipped the news camera, uh, slipped the cameraman the note. So he sends a guy, Jones has this whole thing where he's like, if you want to leave with these people, you can, and a couple people do. Uh, but then Jones sends one of his men undercover as like a refugee trying to leave. So when the when the representative and like these few people get onto a Cessna plane at a local airport strip to get out, Jones's undercover guy pulls a gun and just executes all of them. The representative died, film crew died, all of them. A couple people lived, they played dead. Uh, I think it was like cameramen. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, Jones has men roll up with rifles on the back of a troop carrier. They kill everyone else at the airport, again, other than the two survivors. Um, and then they come back and tell Jones what happened. So at this point, Jones knows that, you know, the United States government and all these people go. So then he tells everyone, this is it. They're sending troops. We have to end it now. So they do. And that's what led to the suicide. So by the time that, like, American, like, federal agents got there to arrest everyone, they were all already dead. Right. Jesus. So was so so with Jones was his goal the entire time this mass suicide or was there anything beyond that? Jones's ultimate goal to everything was to just control people. Uh, ever since a young age, he would lie and manipulate to even his young friends to try to get them to do what he wanted. His wife, for example, he was uh, originally he was a pastor and uh, he would get a lot of members of his congregation to just do like weird. Like, just live in houses he tells them to, or to eat food that he tells them to. He just wanted to be in control of their lives. He exercised this a lot on his wife. Uh, his wife was younger than him, and he used that to his advantage. Um, he would convince her to, like, be, like, capitalist, and then socialist, and then capitalist again, just to prove that he could change her mind whenever he wanted to. Wow. Um, so he was basically living out at Jonestown in his fantasy land. He has an entire city of people... I mean, the name of the place is Jonestown. He has a whole city of people who do exactly what he says whenever he says it. So he was just happy playing that for a while. And as soon as the feds threaten it, well, he's not going to let this get taken away from him. So he'd rather die and know in his mind that everyone died with him. Uh, the way everyone killed themselves was they drank a mixture of, I think it was cyanide, it was cyanide or arsenic one mixed with uh, flavor aid, like a Kool-Aid thing. Mm -hmm. So they all die. And then he laid his head down on a pillow at the front of a stage that he would preach from in front of all the dead bodies. He laid his head on a pillow and shot himself. So for someone like him, um, do you think that this is a person that can like confide in anyone or have honest interactions with any human being? Or is it just a completely said, like, like feeling Jim alone Jones, in the world? Uh, you're saying Jim Jones specifically, right? Yeah. Jim Jones is one of the few people that reading about i'm like yeah someone should have like killed him pretty early mm -hmm. <laughs> like every i have not read one legitimate interaction like i said when he was a kid he would kill dogs just so he could like prove his own power or whatever like sure maybe there was mental illness or like at least some narcissistic personality disorder involved but this guy was like as evil as evil comes. I'm just so um, curious so no, what, I, like, I, what, like like when you meet someone like this is it nurture is it nature are they just pure 
Like, like, do they get anything out of like friendly interactions or helping people or being nice to people? I, or is it just pure, like, there's just something in their mind that makes them want to hurt everyone? I don't know. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. There was this, um, uh, when he started out preaching, he was, I think he, he wasn't Pentecost. He was like a Methodist or something like that. And he viewed Pentecost as like a stupid religion. And then he goes to a tent revival for a Pentecost group in Indianapolis. It was during the big like faith healing time. Yeah, you, you hear stories of like old tent revivals where they would like scream at each other to, you know, heal them of their disease. I assume it's similar to these. There's these big church sessions they have where the guy's like, the devil is coming out of you. The devil is coming out. It's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, so very similar. Uh, so that was like happening in Indianapolis. So he goes to one of their meetings and a woman comes up to him. This is a Pentecost revival. A woman comes up to him and says that she's having having a vision and that he's to be a prophet. And immediately Jim Jones is like, you're right. I am a prophet. I am the reincarnation of Elijah. I am. And he immediately abandons every belief he's had for the past 10 years because he realizes that he can manipulate people easier in a Pentecostal setting with people who are this into faith and spiritualism or whatnot. So like, I haven't seen a single legitimate thing he's done other than want to have control or dominion over people gotcha like so to, to, to answer your question like i don't know if a legitimate reaction would be anything to him other than someone showing weakness that he can later exploit you know so for some for someone like him it's literally just everybody is a is a pawn in their chess game basically yes yeah yeah pretty much wow. i think so but... that's that's so that's so fascinating i wish we could uh I wish we could talk to some of these people. Obviously, it's kind of tough, but if you had the opportunity, would you interview? I mean, obviously, Jim, Jim Jones is dead. Would you interview someone who had led a cult? Like, would you, if, if somehow you got government clearance to go to their jail cell and have an interview with them with bodyguards where you're not going to be killed on site, would you want to, like, have an interview on YouTube and, like, talk to them? Or do you think that'd be too dangerous? No, no, absolutely. I would love to. Um, even if there is, I don't want to say this in a way that makes me sound like, oh, I would I wouldn't be tricked by a cult. Because a lot of, like, self-respecting people get tricked by cults or whatever. But I understand that manipulators can be really good at it, right? Um, and I think a setting like that, like an interview, I would hope to be objective. And if I if I was to like get, I don't know, bias or, you know, they try to convince me or whatever, and if it worked to some degree, I think that would be as equally interesting. Yeah, I think um, so. I think people would probably find that really fascinating. Yeah. I'm just yeah. so, I'm just like, I don't want to say I'm a journalist, but as YouTubers, we kind of are journalistic in nature a little bit. We try to be. I'd be so curious to get like, there was this 4chan post that went around a while ago that I foolishly 72% believed, which is way too much, where they were saying that the Unabomber was going to be going on Rogan. And I was like, oh my God, it's it's happening. Even though it was just oh, like this random 4chan great. post, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, I would have loved that. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Bedhead Bernie has been uh, talking to me about like uh, FOIAing um, government documents and he downloaded like 700 of them on his computer. He's just been going through. One of them was about how uh, how the Unabomber was um, uh, a victim of MK Ultra. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I talked about that in my video about him. Have you seen my video? I, I don't mean that like, oh, have you seen my video? I did just... watch it. I watched it all the way through. I'm a loyal Wendigoon okay, watcher, cool. but it was crazy to see it sort of confirmed in the document. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I won't, yeah, so I won't belabor the same points, but all that stuff about his time at uh, Harvard. I think it was MK Ultra. I think he was already like that going into it. I wouldn't call it the... It's, it, some people have the view when they hear that of like, oh, it, Ted Kaczynski was a normal person and then MK Ultra made him that way. I think maybe the MK Ultra experiments just reinforced yeah. his. You gotta, oh, it, it's sort of a, uh, it's, it's like a little boost of nitrous and in, in need for speed, you know, just get the, gets things going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant to say. That's that's what I mean by that. <laughs> just gets things going. It's like when you it's like when you're smoking a cigarette and you pop a zin in. Just get things gets things going. <laughs> that's very dark. He also he also showed me sh about how uh, the government plans to nuke Florida and blame it on the Cubans to invade the to invade yep. the island. Oper Operation Northwoods. What uh, the what the what the app? What the F, Wendigoon? What's going on? So it was uh, it was this idea the CIA had put forward that if they can make a false flag attack uh, and then pin it on the Cubans, it would cause the American populace to agree with their initiative to, like, you know, attack Cuba. Population um, control, and then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then uh, Kennedy said no. And then shortly after that, he got assassinated, which is people tie that into, yeah. like, the CIA killed Kennedy thing. Which that wouldn't have been the only reason they killed they him. They probably did, though. Wouldn't have helped. <laughs> they probably did. Yeah, they, oh, they, def they definitely did. I'm in full belief the feds killed him. Uh, 
But yeah, there there's a lot of stuff like that. I've been getting into Brandon Herrera recently after Donut Operator hit me up watching his videos. You've, pro I've, you've yeah. definitely commented on them and whatever. His videos where he like, let's recreate the JFK assassination. The assassination. Those videos are so crazy. I wonder if he could get away with like doing a video. Like here's the arsenal they used in Columbine. I don't know if that'll be pushing it too much, but I mean, it's for historical, you know, research purposes. I don't I, I don't mean, see did why. you, the video got deleted now, but the day after Shinzo Abe died, he recreated the shooting. Yeah. The video immediately got striked and it was a big deal on his channel but he it is not it is not beneath him to be like oh well the columbine no. shooters had blah 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 he's so <laughs> those guys are a little crazy they're awesome um they are brandon's a great guy uh every time i go hang out with him it's like hanging out with old friends he like, also he did this video I, I haven't seen the full video i've just seen clips on youtube but he like uh he was going over the gun used in i don't remember what the name of the shooting was i think it was in texas or something but it was that trans shooter that they like refused to release oh, the manifesto yeah, for yeah, yeah. and he the, was like the nashville shooting yeah yeah oh was it nashville yeah that was yeah. uh <laughs> he, he goes crazy with the comments sometimes he goes off he's a funny he's a funny guy yeah yeah he he likes to he does a bit of trolling for sure i didn't realize how young uh, he is i thought he was like 40 you know he's like 28 yeah yeah me and him have talked about it like we what was it that like made me realize how young he was oh he was talking about like shows he grew up with and stuff and i'm like oh yeah we are the same age I well forget that. Yeah. like five years ago he looked he looked a lot younger like he was thin i don't know if he just started going to the gym and bulk bulk maxing but yeah, he's gotten a lot he bigger a lot. yeah 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 he's he's very very fit and hot and cool <laughs> yeah beefcake dude give him a big smooch for me or maybe we'll give him a smooch nah, together he, he, once him and cody started hanging out because cody's like donut operator mm -hmm. he's like shredded so I, yeah. I think like being around cody he was like hey you know what you're gonna start doing <laughs> and then, like brandon just got so small. so i have this idea we can't tell donut operator Shh, everyone on stream the thousand people watching right now don't tell anyone my idea is that when i go out there to shoot a video with them i saw in the background of um donut operator's videos he had like uh he he had um a bunch of Funko Pops. So I was thinking about how funny it would be if we if I go out there with like a hundred Funko Pops in my trunk and we shoot them. I think that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> just to like just that to spite his, his soy interests. Um I think that'd be pretty good. I don't know which ones I would get. I also didn't realize how expensive Funko Pops are, so maybe I'll just try to get a bunch of knockoffs because they are like ten bucks at least. A pop ten bucks a pop. So it's kind of an investment. But I think that would be super funny if I pull up. In my mind I wanted to have like floor to ceiling trunk full in like a fucking escalator or something, but I think that might be a little expensive. But <laughs> I'll, I'll get I'll get some amount. We, we'll do alpha graphics, you know, vi visual effects after the fact to make it. Uh... <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, Cody's a cool guy. Uh, all of them, all those guys are like surprise more weeb than you would think. Uh, and I say that as someone who like does like some anime and stuff. But that you kind of get the interpretation of like, oh, these are just like you know stereotypical like redneck guys they like guns trucks whatever but now they're into they're into you know the same weird stuff we're into yeah yeah well it's just like a generational thing i feel like everybody under the age of like 32 at this point probably likes anime and uh hyper pop and young lean and 100 gex or something there's just this collective consciousness going on so no matter who you are like at this point at this point tucker carlson's like 100 gex fire fire <laughs> You know, like everybody, and he's, I mean, he's old, but it's kind of cool to just see like the internet disseminate all these weird things that probably only like freaks in their f***ing basement doing, uh, doing turkesterone should like, but instead everybody's into yeah, it. It spreads. We can't do anything about it. <laughs> no. Dude, I recently, um, did you watch Fish Tank season one at all? I, wa I watched like highlight reels clips. I watched some of your videos covering it, but I didn't watch like the actual streams do you remember some, uh... do you remember john john was the guy um he's like an andrew tate fan with a speech impediment i do remember him yeah i uh he was in rhode island recently so i drove down there to do a video with him and uh as soon as i got there he makes me take this these pills that more place more dates makes called sigma and he makes you take turkesterone the pills are called sigma they say it just says sigma on them with a picture of a fucking monkey <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> Um, okay. so he makes me take that. He's like, I, I do one. He's like, you got to have three. I'm like, why? He's like, it's above the recommended dose. But, uh, anytime the bottle says one, take like four or five. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I will take five. So I took it 
felt nothing. <laughs> That's definitely doctor advice for he, sure. Oh yeah, medical professional. I took the turkesterone, <laughs> felt nothing. Um, and then we, we were running around uh, Providence all day shooting shooting videos, like <laughs> hanging out with homeless people downtown, which is pretty <laughs> funny. Like home, homeless tweakers. Like the, the tweakers in Providence are so, so funny because some of them will be like, hey man, what's up? And some of them, like you try to talk to them and they're like, <laughs> it's like, oh, you're not a person anymore. I didn't realize you were that far gone. <laughs> You're not a person anymore. I feel like a really fun Mr. Beast video would be like going homeless for one month and like week one, like day one, still got my Patagonia on. I'm still a pretty normal guy. I'm living out of my car. Week two, just like smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. Your skin's starting to drip a little bit around the edges. Week three, you can't speak English anymore. Week four, <laughs> you're literally a ghoul from Fallout. You're running around biting people's like faces <laughs> off. I think that would be like just the most epic video of all <laughs> Mr. time. Mr. Beast gets shot by the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Finally, dude. <laughs> Although I don't know how the communists would feel about that because on one hand, it's like, or, or not maybe just not the communists, but on one hand, you know, obviously they want Mr. Beast to die. But on the other hand, it's like the cops killed him. So like what, you know, what, what level of justice is this really? I don't know. We'll pull weird, them. It's a weird gray area. I'll pull a slacker TV. Yeah, big, big gray area. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad that's going well. I'm excited for the Jonestown video. Is that COD uh, history video still coming out? I've been hyped for that one. Yeah, yeah. It, it will eventually sometime this year. Um, there's... There's one big video I want to make. I try to, like, stagger the different kinds. So, like, I'll cover something fictional, then I'll cover, like, a true crime, then maybe a, a literature. Like, I try to sparse them out. Yeah. Uh, so before I cover that, the fictional thing I want to cover is House of Leaves. I've been, like, working on that video for the past. Working's a strong word. I've been reading it and then thinking about we it. We talked <laughs> about guess... we, we talked about this, I think, four months ago when you were starting. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And I'm still, I still read that, like, a, a different chapter every every couple days and i'm like oh boy okay let me <laughs> let me digest it's such a dense book in a good way so i want to get that one out beforehand but then after that yeah i'd like to make the cod video mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that video is uh, obviously I like all your stuff, but the COD video I've been hyped for because the lore behind that series is is so deep, so interesting. I feel like uh, it will probably be one of the best performing videos for you. I don't want to jinx it too much, but um, a lot of COD fans are pretty rowdy uh, these days, especially because the COD games suck now. So they like reminiscing on the old ones. Yeah, yeah, it's especially because like the old ones were not only did they set a bunch of like new things in the gaming realm, like, you know, when COD 4 came out, it, you know, reset the map, but it also did did so much culturally like do you remember like the political storm when modern warfare 2 came out mm -hmm. like no russian and all that it was mm -hmm. insane i think a lot of people have kind of forgot about some of those details those games i yeah. feel like they're they're fun now but they used to challenge like notions around what you can and can't do in a video game or like art yeah. they used to yeah. um touch on you know sensitive i mean issues like mass shootings or like um you know obviously the black ops series is all about like you know covert ops and government interference in you know overthrowing um other states and uh those games used to tackle that stuff a lot more with the campaigns and now i mean i haven't played a cod game in a while but my understanding is that they're just not really tackling those heavy issues like they used to they're just like action set pieces it's no different from like a sort of uh michael bay flick yeah you know? it kind of started I'm with modern warfare someone... 3 yeah 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 modern warfare 3 i still think it was a like narratively i think it worked as an ending for the characters and everything but it didn't push the envelope mm -hmm. as much i mean you could do a video about all of the history behind those games um you could talk about their development there's so much good shit from there i've been meaning yeah, to do wanted... a doctor disrespect video for a while now but i don't know if i've told you he started as like a cod um guy and uh this band Avenged Sevenfold, he used to just play with them with just some fucker, and then he just started streaming and blew the fuck up. Yeah, he, uh, I don't watch a lot of streamers, so I only know, like, the highlight stuff, but I remember hearing about him during, like, the PUBG days. That's why I think I first heard about him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he seems like an interesting character. I remember, uh, I, I hate to, like, just remember someone from their worst moments, but I, I remember, like, the wife cheating stuff, all the memes around it. That's really as far as my knowledge on him goes. The, the video, when after he cheated on her, she like came out with a knife or whatever and like put it against his neck. That was like a legendary. What a great way to respond to cheating. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, basically after it happened, I mean, he cried and, you know, he felt bad for it. And then when he I've came seen that, yeah. when he came back, his first stream back, she was there in the background dressed like a fuck, like a, a Lara Croft, like type assassin with like a knife against his neck. It was pretty badass. <laughs> So she, so he did cheat on his wife, uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, like he said so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Too bad. Too bad. Can't be doing that. Certainly not base. Not base. You're cool. Not base at all.
Um, Wendigoon, we got to have a conversation about something important, okay? This has been on my mind oh, for a no. while. Oh, no. You're you're looking kind of hot. You're looking kind of hot lately. I feel like you lost like 20 pounds. Oh. What, what's going on? Why are you getting sexier? Oh, thank I can't you. pay attention that's, to the that's videos so, that's when, so my when my fucking dick is out the whole time. Oh, that's that's so sweet, Tom. Uh, yeah, I've dropped weight. I did right before the wedding. Uh, like I started running a lot. And then since then, I haven't been as good about going to the gym now as I was right before the wedding. But I have been dieting a lot more, just watching what I eat and stuff. Just because, you know, like, I, wa I want to look good for my wife. I want to be physical. The thing is, like, I know there's a lot of, like, younger guys that watch me. And I don't want... I want to be a positive role model in as many ways as I can. That's why I don't, like promote things like drinking, smoking, stuff like that. Even if I don't necessarily have a problem with them, I just don't want to promote it. Mm -hmm. So to that effect, if I won't promote bad stuff, then why not try to promote some good stuff? Like, you know, watch yeah. your weight, um, be active, stuff like that. Don't cheat on your wife. I'm <laughs> like, Dr. Disrespect. That's a good one. Just stuff like that. You know? Sh shout out yeah. Guy. Shout out Guy for that one. <laughs> At least he taught us what not to do. Some lessons are learned the hard way, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I appreciate that. Yeah, but basically just want to, you know, why not? Why not do better? That's good. We're going to get you jacked, though. We're going to get you. Now that you're, you did the cut, now we're going to do the bulk. We're going to do the wind to bulk. I, I would like to bulk up a bit. Yeah, um, I need a good routine because I, I, I was like, when I'm good about going to the gym, I'm good about going to the gym, like every day, making it a routine. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I focus on like certain areas each gym visit, like maybe chest one day. Yeah. Abs and other arms. Is that how you do it? Yeah, I think that's the way to do it, probably. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you're doing, if you're hitting everything every day or getting too unfocused, your muscles gonna are going to be too yeah. fatigued to really grow. <laughs> that's my science analysis but yeah it's definitely good to like have a push day have a pull day have an arm day or whatever um yeah stuff like that is definitely the way to go about it i'm i'm i've been very happy with my gym progress but i have a lot of people in my chat who are telling me that they've gotten into the gym because i told them to which is very like kind good. of warms my good. heart you know i'm not a i'm not trying to be the yeah. most virtuous person ever but if i can get people to go to the gym i feel like that's probably a bigger win than scamming people out of crypto coins or whatever correct yeah that's good to hear i'm, I'm very happy for that man yeah like you know if people, if people are going to be watching you might as well pick up something beneficial in the meantime yeah um we'll all grow together yeah. parasocial audience exactly yeah paras make it make it as parasocial as popular because then they'll buy more merch that's the long oh yeah dude the long the long con behind all self-improvement is just to get people to spend more money on you to buy the to exactly, buy the exactly. to buy the new wendigoon um i know you just did another uh u2s whenever the next one drops people are gonna be buying even more when they put your muscles in they're like oh it's just like <laughs> me now it looks just like me <laughs> Someone said and stop gooning. Yes, that too. So yeah. someone in chat was asking, um, because yeah, no more gooning. Someone in chat talked about uh wait, shout out Chris from Mr. Beast. Okay. Someone in chat talked about how um you obviously you cover a lot of dark topics on your channel. I do too. Um, but uh, is there ever a point when you have to take a step back and like there's just something that's too dark for you to cover? Like there's something that's too disturbing. You can't you can't mentally handle it or you don't want to get into it on your channel. Is there any point where you'd be like, this is enough? Yeah, there's been several times. I don't think that there's topics I can't cover per se. There's just stuff I need to figure out the best way to go about it. So like, for example, I did a video about um, Unit 731. I'd actually tried to do that video like a year earlier and I'd like taken all the notes and I'd write and then I I'd wrote everything I needed for it. And then I sat down to record and I'm like, I really, because everything I was going to talk about was like, oh, there was one case where a woman was pregnant and then she got blah 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 or yeah. there's one case they took a name i was like i don't want to just make an hour straight of that so maybe maybe i don't do it now so then like a year later i readdressed and was like okay uh maybe if i instead talk about the history of the group itself talk about why japan felt like they needed it and then kind of touch on the brutality and that's what i did and i think it went better so it's i had a similar situation with blood meridian blood meridian in any moments in it that I can't, that I didn't want to talk about. So maybe talk about more of the themes of what those heavy moments represent. So it's a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say there's stuff I get to that I'm like, I can't touch this. More so just, I need to find a different way to touch it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, definitely, that's the way I feel with a lot of it. With uh, obviously some of the some of the DM scraping during some of the videos, like probably the darkest thing I've ever covered recently was the giggly goon clown thing. And a decent amount of that video was spent talking about how people yeah, fall that into keeps, these that situations. That video still keeps me up at night. Like <laughs> it's fucked up. It's so fucked up. Yeah. And the worst part is there's like 
seven things like that that are going on right now that people want me to make videos about that I just haven't gotten to. Uh, that's like not, that's not an isolated incident. There's like a, a little network of gooners and groomers and LCPs, some may say, that are uh, going around doing that kind of thing, which is very scary, very scary. Um, I, I'm honestly surprised that kind of stuff hasn't gotten more like mainstream media attention considering those guys love to talk about like she was then groomed on roblox an online platform known for game development but often yeah. misused by predators That's to develop victims <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um i i think it's just to, to be honest i think it's just because it's too weird for them in a way not that they don't cover stuff involving like children or whatnot but there's so many layers of internet culture in explaining Giggly Goon Clown. I don't know how like mainstream media would pull it off. Yeah, you have to explain than, what gooning is on me. I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anderson Cooper has exactly. explained what gooning is. Yeah. Maybe Tucker Carlson would take that story, but not not a lot of others. Yeah, I mean, the problem with someone like Tucker covering it is it, uh, it will just be heavily politicized too, which is a big problem with mainstream media covering it because either with Giggly Goon Clown, it's either going to turn into an anti-trans thing or a pro-trans thing. And I think that you shouldn't be going you know amongst either angle for that you should just try to cover the facts behind it and not get too deep into the weeds of political stuff people. yeah exactly yeah. um but obviously everybody has their own agenda that they're trying to push and unfortunately that can get in the way of the story sometimes um but yeah stuff like that super interesting to cover i've been uh <laughs> i've been hip to there's like a whole so the first wave of low cows like 10 years ago started with like kiwi farms type stuff but the new wave is like all on tiktok and obviously it's covered on kiwi farms so there's like 10 different tiktok low cows like daniel larson jupiter online or sorry nova online jupiter the hybrid um there's some guy called world of t-shirts everybody wants me to talk about i, I don't even I, I, oh my gosh kayla's obsessed with that guy is she i don't even understand it yet but there's just there's all these people that oh, just weird. uh because of how accessible tiktok is it feels like early YouTube where, because it's just so easy to use, you're going to find a broad, broad spectrum of people. And it's also not so commercialized like YouTube is now. Where YouTube now, like, I mean, you can find a lot of weird stuff on it, but for the most part, you're mostly going to be finding, um, especially on like the homepage recommended stuff, it's going to be like established creators who have businesses and are probably relatively sane, normal people. Um, within reason yeah. but on tiktok uh you go on tiktok and five videos in you're gonna find somebody eating their own poop on live stream um <laughs> which is gross but it's great for someone like me who like has a morbid curiosity <laughs> around trailer park trash and i think tiktok's probably gonna be that way for the next five years until they eventually clean it up if they ever clean it up because i'd, I'd argue some of the biggest appeal of tiktok is just that the an average you know whatever person from whatever background can develop a following for literally any reason and i mean tiktok in a lot of cases doesn't even ban them even when there's like a legit crime like they're kind of slow to ban them their moderation is just really bad so it can be sort of a it can be sort of a double-edged sword in that way but i i personally am at the very least enjoying the content that these horrible people provide me i know at one point you talked about how you wanted to cover some like youtuber related stuff is that still uh in the back of your mind at uh at any point uh, in the future uh, more uh, what, do you remember specifically what kind of YouTuber? You had talked about how you wanted to do videos a little bit about um, online cults and um, YouTubers who maybe fall into uh, like predatory religions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I've kind of my, my, my ideas change all the time for like specifically what I want to cover and stuff. I have this idea for a video about so you know how like the the markedly bad Christianity is like televangelist, right? Like. Preachers who ask for people's money and stuff to, uh, yes. you know, heal people who pe preach the prosperity gospel. If you if you do good things for me, then good things will happen to you. That whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've thought for a while about making a video that covers so talks about how it has manipulated with like culture, technology, stuff like that. So how the whole televangelist things kind of moved to some online spheres, some internet spheres. Uh, talk about some good people, some people have used religion in a positive aspect. Because um, I feel like as a Christian, I have more insight to that than a lot of people just from the outside looking in who see it as all the same beast. Um, so yeah, I, 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 de I definitely cover some creators in that sense. Uh, what, what you said a second ago was interesting about like TikTok, because I haven't thought about it that way, that YouTube's mostly like businesses or like business minded people, so to speak, but TikTok's still kind of the wild west. Well, because because city. on YouTube, people know now that you can make money. Being like a YouTuber 10 years ago was such an esoteric thing, but now it's just so established that you can be a YouTuber making money. It's not even that uncommon that a business would go to YouTube. Every late night host yeah. on YouTube, um, Conan O'Brien moved his operation, I think, entirely to YouTube. Um, 
And so a lot of people just know that you can make money there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean that people who don't have money in mind are kind of pushed to the to the sort of the background versus on TikTok. There is money to be made, obviously, but um, it's sort of still the wild, wild west. And because it's a, a relatively low time investment for making a 60 second video, pretty much anybody can develop a following there, which I think is really interesting. And it allows for a lot of pretty good content, but also we're starting to see a lot of people who they know that there's kind of this cringe content factory. And so there's like these trolls who come around and pretend to be crazier than they are, pretend to be grosser than they are. Like, like that, uh, that kid with the, the room, the Roblox yes. streamer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually, I'm planning to do a video with him at some point. Um, I messaged him and see oh, really? Down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just, just people like that are interesting, but I do want to focus more on the ones that are real as opposed to the ones that are fake. Um, but, but yeah, um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you too much, but um, you are saying? No, 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 you're good. Uh, I, I was just thinking how it's like, I haven't thought about TikTok that way, that it is still kind of the Wild West in the way that early YouTube used to be. So there is a lot room, there is a lot more room for weird stuff to happen. So th I watched your video about the, um, the band, Kids. What's the name? Yes, Luna, uh, that was uh, Jupiter the Hybrid. Yeah, Jupiter. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And that that was a wild. <laughs> that was a wild series of yes. events. Yes. And you don't. Yeah, you're right in that you don't see many people like that on YouTube anymore, just because mm -hmm. YouTube's so like polished, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess TikTok would be the wor world for it because you got guys like that, and then you've got people like that World of T-shirts guy who's also insane. So yeah, there there is. I, you know what? Maybe I've been a bit too harsh on TikTok. Maybe they're farming to be had over there. Dude, if you want to find like, I mean, cults, obviously it's hard to confirm what's real and what's fake, but I'd say that within three or four years, we're going to see like giant media exposés and government intervention on cults that are being run through TikTok just because it's so accessible um, and so easy to get recommended that kind of content. That being said, I, I will say, I saw a good video essay about this, but um, I, I did notice it. And I think a lot of people noticed it before this guy kind of all put it together. Um, the YouTube algorithm changed a bit recently where it used to be, I think for a few years, at least, you're really only going to see established creators on the homepage and you're recommended or people you're subscribed to. But now every right. time I log in, I'm going to get a video probably that has 10 views from some random channel that I've never heard of before is totally outside of like the kind of content I would watch from some kid who's just like, hey guys, set up tour that like, there's no reason the video should that. be recommended yeah. to me. Yeah. And so I think YouTube, because they know TikTok is doing that a little bit, I think they're compensating a little bit by obviously they did shorts, but also a big part of it, I think is they're giving pretty much anyone a chance to blow up on YouTube right now. And that's why you're seeing stuff like that on your homepage. Yeah, I heard that uh, they were prioritizing probably as a competitor to TikTok you're right they're prioritizing um like brand new creators because mm -hmm. i've heard people who are starting youtube now say yeah well you'll get some views on your first two videos but after that it's it's a bit harder to mm -hmm. so maybe it's like an artificial boost to people just starting out which i guess makes sense from a business perspective right you want new people coming to the platform to it's kind of like whenever you start a new like online video game and they put you in the bot lobbies for the first couple matches Mm -hmm. you know so that way you kind of feel the ropes feel better at it I, it makes sense why they would do that but yeah i've, I've noticed that too that I've, i'll get some like 80 view videos from a two subscriber channel in my in my uh, recommended and I think that's why a lot of um, people are starting new channels right now and succeeding with it, especially established creators. So for example, it used to kind of be if you start a podcast channel, the first two months are probably only going to be views coming from um, people who went from your video, your, where you promoted it, you plugged it like, hey, you know, like, for example, you recently, you did a, you started a podcast with Meat Canyon, you started a podcast with Critical, and the Critical one is on a new channel. It used to be only people coming from those channels to subscribe would be the people that find it. Now, right. now it's sort of this thing going on where um, that, that channel is immediately going to get recommended to a ton of people um, who maybe otherwise wouldn't see it or maybe would be kind of interested in the content versus before it was like to really get into recommended you got to wait to get monetized you got to wait um, yeah, to have a substantial yeah. audience and now it's like i mean the first day you started that channel with meat canyon I, I hadn't even seen that you shouted it out it was in my recommended yeah yeah like it it, it, it there's there is a favoritism to it this kind of goes to that point um, so the, the one with critical mm -hmm. is, uh, on a pre-existing channel called the official channel mm -hmm. uh, or the official network, because that's where they have their podcast. That was a channel that already existed. And it's got like Charlie, you know, a huge YouTuber on it. And then Meat Canyon and I started a brand new channel for our podcast. And that one has more subscribers than the pre-existing one with Charlie. Right. Which and I think a lot of weird. that is because the algorithm's pushing new channels. Yeah. So I think like right now for anybody watching this, if you're planning to start a new channel and you actually have some content to make, if you put like two good videos out in the first week and they do well, 
you're probably going to keep doing well. If you put out two bad yeah, videos yeah. and you get those two freebie recommendations from YouTube and you know people don't really subscribe or there's bad watch time, you're probably going to have a hard time getting off the ground. So, um, yeah, super. it's a super interesting time to be to be a content creator right now. Yeah. Ka Kayla's been uh, thinking about starting a channel for a while. And I'm like, bro, like now is now is the hot time to do it for oh, yeah. several reasons. You should get in on that. Bro, she should start a channel with the monkeys, dude. That's what she wants to do. She wants to do a, uh, a channel about like weird, like uh, animal uh, cases in like animal science from history, like weird experiments that happen, stuff like that. Because she has very intimate knowledge about like how they work legal wise and medically. So I mm -hmm. think she'd be really good at it. Yeah. Um, but she's been talking about forever, and I'm like, bro, like, new YouTube channels are really hot right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking more like, we gave a monkey 100 bars of Xanax, and this is what happened. That like, too. Yeah, she could great. do that. Yeah, I think that would be really good. <laughs> we gave a monkey yeah, lean, yeah. and he started making the best rap songs of all time. Teaching a monkey how to make AI SpongeBob rap. Yeah, just inst instantly <laughs> fired. But it doesn't matter, because now she's a YouTuber, so it's fine. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And that video is going to make, like, a year's worth. Yeah, I mean, I was, you can't abuse people on YouTube. Animals, dude. Who cares? Who cares? It's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's not like there's any, any rules about animal abuse. No, it's fair game, dude. Surely. It's fair game. Okay, so <laughs> yesterday I was on stream and somebody, my chat made me react to this video from, like, Meat Canyon's, like, former editor, like, exposing him. And I, I tried to go into it neutrally. I did have kind of a negative bend already because I kind of like Meat Canyon. But I was like, okay, I'll give this person a chance. And they were like, their basic story was like, they got hired by him. They were an alcoholic. They missed two deadlines and they got fired. And then Meat Canyon gave them a bunch of money at the end as a severance package to be nice for multiple videos they hadn't edited. And then they're like, that was hush money for me to not talk about my experience. It's like, you're a fucking, you're a fucking loser. They got paid $850 to edit a 16 minute video, by the way, which is like, oh my gosh, that's like really good. I wouldn't fucking pay someone that's that. solid money. Yeah. Um, and they're complaining. They're like, I know how much money Meat Canyon is making. And it's like, well, I mean, he's also running a business, but you got paid like a week's pay for an average person to edit one fucking video where he responded to Taylor Swift's stand tweets, which was like nothing. Like, it's just, I don't know. Oh, so wait, wait. I thought you were saying they maybe had something to do with the animation side because it's Meat Canyon. No, but no, no, no. That's no. his Papa Meat channel. That's just editing the normal video. Yeah, yeah. That's like editing a normal sit down video. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was, like it was way easier. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. These people are just, uh, listen, I, I love, I love the YouTube editors. I'm very thankful for, for how they've helped me with my channel, but we need to put a total stop on YouTube editors and editors in general so we can figure out what the f*** is going on. These people, these people need to be put under my boot and uh, paid nothing to edit until they appreciate, they appreciate their position. Okay. Total moratorium right. on, on editor immigration so we can figure out what the f*** is going on. Um, right, right. Because we all know that they're, they're worse than us. Oh yeah, I mean, I, we all we, yeah, obviously, obviously, it's like, dude, I'm the I'm the YouTuber, dude. I'm the guy whose face is in it. You're gonna argue with me? No, 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 totally unacceptable, <laughs> totally unacceptable. Um, but it's okay. We'll you know we'll get the camp going. That'll be another Mr. Beast video. I made a hundred YouTube editors edit my videos against their will for free, and this is what happened. Just like slowly brainwashing them. It's like, well, now I have no overhead. <laughs> now I have no overhead for my channel. Like, well, good job, Mr. Beast. Good job. Keep 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 up with the the food pantry stuff. I'm thankful though that I think a lot of that kind of, uh, I think that video that this person made probably would have seemed much more powerful a few years ago, but thankfully people I think are wisening up to the fact that most of these like creator exposés are just like, they didn't need to happen. <laughs> they don't need to happen. Yeah. Which is kind of how I felt about, I don't want to get too into it, but the shit that you got on Twitter was just like, I don't even know what people are mad about here. They're just finding some reason to be upset. Yeah. I mean, it's with anything. Like if someone doesn't, I mean, you know this as well as I do. If someone doesn't like you, then anything against you is fair game, right? Mm -hmm. So... They didn't like me for XYZ reason, which is fine, but then that becomes, oh, well, five other things I don't like because that's more convenient for me. And that's what happens with a lot of people. Like, Dream's a good example of that. Like, you know, I, I think he's cringe, therefore he's all these other horrendous yeah. things. Um, yeah, it, it just happens to be like that. Ashido uh, made a pretty was... good point on my stream about Dream. Sorry to interrupt. It was just, uh, he was okay. saying how, like, a lot of the people who hate him are also, like, former stands of him. And I think they're, they're, yeah. th them attempting to go after him is almost like a spiritual reconciliation, like, almost a troll's remorse for them having used to like his content, realizing it's cringe. And now they're like, well, now that I know he's cringe, it's time to call him a 
file. And it's like, oh, yeah. well, yeah. Your, your psychology is sort of paper thin, but I didn't even think about it that way until recently. And I think he was super right on that. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point. The, who was that one guy who had the girl who was like a stalker of his and then she makes a video uh, uh, also. So, oh, it was uh, Quentin. Quentin. Yeah. But do you remember like how awful that situation was? <laughs> like this girl, um, like what basically said she loved him, uh, edited for him, did a bad job, all this stuff. And then when he's like, uh, I don't have the same feelings for you, she makes like an expose about him. Like, that, poor guy. His response was so funny because it was like, she said she loved me and I did not. And so <laughs> it put me in an awkward position. I felt pretty bad for him throughout that. Um, and also people are like, I don't know. Uh, so I'm, I, my mutuals on Twitter, some of these people I think are cool people, but they're like saying, they're like, he made a nine hour video about Sam and Cat. It's creepy. It's like, it's just a TV show. I don't think it's that deep, to be honest. It's a TV you. show. Who cares? And he spends a lot of it. Like, I, I watch, I haven't seen the recent ones, but I watched the first one. And he goes into a lot of the production behind it and how, like, how writer's room changes. You know, someone who's, like, interested in how, like, television works, it, it is a cool, like, series to watch. They act like he spends the whole time talking about, like, who he has a crush on or whatever. It's weird. It's weird. Um, yeah. yeah, his videos are fine. And also, do you know how much money... He makes off a nine and a half hour video about Sam and Cat. Like, a disgusting amount. You would, yeah, you guys would also be making those videos if they did that well. Well, that's the thing. I mean, these people, these people just, the long video bad thing is so infuriating because I know that like with short attention spans now, it's sort of frowned upon to make a video that's like seven hours long or whatever. I get it. I get it's a little annoying sometimes to watch a video that long, but like if you actually watch the videos, it's not like he's saying nothing. It's not like it's all padding. He has like a reason to make the content. And when you or I make a long video, there was a reason that video exists. Um, you you can call the content itself dumb. Like if you don't care about Jonestown or if you don't care about Cyrax or if you don't care about Sam and Cat, I get it. That's fine. If you want to say it's like just of little interest to you, but to invalidate the existence of the content as a whole because of that, I think is just kind of silly, silly, silly behavior. Yeah. The offset of like, cause there are some people out there who like Cyrax, for example, they won't click on a, which I enjoyed that video, by the way. Good job. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of people who will click on a 15 minute video about Cyrax. But won't we uh, we won't click on like a multi-hour one mm -hmm. uh but i feel like that's offset enough by people who really do want a multi-hour one who want to know everything yes. there is to know yeah it's like for me i've heard about cyrax i'd seen like a clip every now and then but i wanted like the full scoop and your video gave that i don't want another 15 minute video about the guy well that was so. it for me it was like i like the guys that do the 15 minute videos i get why they exist but it's just sort of segmented into these little parts where if you watch any video um you're gonna have to watch the entire series to understand the full story i think the nice thing yeah. about having it in one upload is like you watch it for two hours you sit down you know you listen to it in the background to whatever you're doing and then you know the entire story and you don't need to go look for these little sources which i think is part of the convenience yeah. of having a long video especially because like have you made any follow-up videos i'm trying to think of some right now like you made a video about a guy and then a year later you make like an update video of sorts kind of how june the king did with like boogie and wings i honestly i did it i've done it with boogie outside of that i haven't yet but i'm planning to like um i did the one video about daniel larson last year and i'm planning to do like a two hour one where i put some of that info in it and then i like do his entire story because he's been going crazier. I think he got an Applebee's or an Olive Garden shut down and the feds raided it or something. I heard, of, I heard about that. Which yeah. is so awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely planning to do more follow-ups now. Um, and I also have this I have this idea in my mind that I want to do uh, I want to do the low cow iceberg or low cow rabbit hole where it's like nine uh, fucking hours of all of those guys so people can precious. just get it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think that would be excellent. Uh, yeah, I, I, the, what, the reason I bring that up is because like your videos work it works for like a follow-up series because by the time i watch that cyrax video i'm like okay i'm caught up i can now if i wanted to i can now start seeing what cyrax does day to day because I, I know all the background right and you can actually piece it together and it means something instead of like you just see some video of him like spurging out or beating up his troll and it's like well what's the greater context here now if, if you've if you've watched my video now you kind of know who music biz marty is you know uh, you know a little bit more about this stuff and you can go forward with a little more knowledge and um i mean if anything i think you know trick trickle down economics reaganomics uh my video existing probably helps out uh, other people who do videos about him yeah yeah i I, th I think it works well that's why i ask about like updates and stuff because it feels like the full like the the only person to give like a comprehensive look at it um 
So j j just on general topics like that. Uh, didn't you, you made a video about Gypsy Crusader, right? Or you mentioned I he did, was a section in one of your videos? I did talk about him during, um, it was a video about people inspired by the Joker who became criminals, yes. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I see stuff like that, and that, like, Gypsy Crusader's always been a figure that I've, like, seen and been like, what's his whole deal? And I haven't taken the time to research for myself, so seeing, like, topics about that... Um, or seeing videos like that go a long way to like give me context for stuff mm -hmm. I see. So then when I see a new development with it, it's like, okay, I now have some background that I can actually put stuff together. So it's appreciated. Yeah, that guy, um, I don't know that it was real, but I saw some message where it just said Gypsy Crusader on Discord. It could have been someone impersonating him. I'm sure he has a ton of impersonators, yeah. but he said he wanted to like come to my house and beat me up after that video. Um, <laughs> which I think I just, I like to imagine the ring camera footage of him. Like, I know you're in there, Turkey Tom. I know you're in the come out. What'd you say about me on YouTube? He's got the face paint on. Oh, he better wear the face paint. That video will be so funny <laughs> if i come out and he puts me in a headlock and like have the cops oh, get called that would be so funny Legend. and then you can call vegan gains to come save you oh my yeah i'll fly him out <laughs> gypsy crusaders camped out for 10 hours outside my house and vegan gains comes and just goes psycho mode i heard you eat meat <laughs> So, um, it becomes like a Smash Brawl game out, out of yeah. these long house. That's my, my ultimate goal in my mind is after I've done enough IRL videos with like like Boogie or whoever else, my plan is to, I mean, this would be so expensive, but get them in a house for like a fish tank style reality show and film it for like five weeks. Bro, and uh, so cool. I think that would be so funny. Um, I got to obviously figure out logistics for that because it would be like $100,000 minimum to get that done, but that would just be so funny <laughs> it'd be worth it i think i would so. help finance that That'd thank you i time. appreciate that <laughs> i appreciate that we'll get mr beast on well uh, we'll give them all free turkeys <laughs> for thanksgiving we'll give them prime they can only they can't drink water they have to drink prime the entire if, time if we did that we could get logan to sponsor probably yeah logan k well ksi will do a track he'll do a diss track on them at the end that'd be yep. legendary yep. Yeah. Oh, speaking of speaking of uh, Gypsy Crusader, another one. Did you hear about uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard got out of jail? Yeah, I heard that. I actually have a kind of a fascination with that person. Um, after uh, I watched this mini series about them on Hulu that had like a uh, active yes. reenactments. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty good. Um, it's a good series. Whoever played her mother, I, don't, I can't remember her name, but she was so good but yeah i did hear she got out that case is really interesting to me because uh okay so she got like six years or something and she got out after three the guy the uh, like yeah yeah the guy I think who, it was like eight i think she got eight okay sure. the mentally disabled person who she convinced to kill her mom got like life in prison yeah. I know, I I feel like yeah. maybe he should have gotten 20 years. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe I haven't known that case, you know, as intimately as some other people, but um, it yeah, seems like he was I, kind I, of coerced. I, I feel pretty, that's my one, like, complication around the whole thing. I don't like that she got off and he didn't. Yeah. Um, because, like, part of the reason she got off, and I know they're different, you know, it's different rulings, different courtrooms, whatever, but I don't like the part of the reason she got such little time is because they proved that, like, she was in an abusive situation, this was a means of self-defense, uh, but then that didn't apply to him. Mm -hmm. um, I understand he was the one who did the physical killing, and that carries more weight, sure. But life in prison is too extreme for that case. That's what I thought. But there's this, there's this part in that, in that, in that series that made me like die laughing when um, you probably remember, you probably know what I'm talking about. She's on call with him, and he's like, "You want to see something?" And she's like, "Sure." <laughs> and then he sends her a picture of like a a buff dog with his dick out, and she's like, "I like that." <laughs> yeah. That there, that has to be. I don't know if that's real. That must be real because it's so specific that they put like furry in it. But that was like that was so funny because i immediately the dots connected to my head to understand exactly who this person is yeah <laughs> it's like oh i see what we're dealing with yeah i'm pretty sure that is one for one um i know yeah it's i, I have mixed feelings about it because i understand why gypsy got someone else to do it for because she was in such a situation that you know like she felt entirely hopeless she felt so helpless that she was afraid of walking even when her mom wasn't in the room because yeah. she felt like she was wrong i get why she needed someone to do the killing for her but it all also is someone manipulating a mentally ill individual to get what they want so i don't know it's yeah funny. it's it's kind of a tough gray area but also if he was manipulated into doing it once i mean would he do it again that's the other question maybe that's true. That's um, true, yeah. so in terms of i don't know if he could ever be let into general society considering what he did um yeah yeah, yeah. that's a fair point i don't know if he's in like maximum security with the and cartel guys and funko pop 
um, creators, but uh, <laughs> if he is in there, maybe he could be put in a halfway house. But I mean, once again, I don't know all the details, so I could be betting myself in the app with these comments. Another case, this isn't a real case, but there's a show on HBO called Sharp Objects. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's about Munchausen's by proxy. It has um, Amy Adams is in it, the redhead girl. Mm. That's one of my favorite series about that. It's uh, the, the synopsis is it's about like a journalist who goes home she's like an alcoholic she's depressed she uh she's a cutter girl and uh she goes home to investigate a series of murders in her hometown that have been happening with like young girls disappearing and uh it's like 10 episodes long um, but it turns out her mom has munchausen's by proxy um and that's just kind of one of the plot twists but um i won't reveal anything more but that is one of the most interesting series i've seen about that um just in terms of analyzing psychology and doing it in a, like a nice narrative way i'm so hyped for when i know i mean it sounds a little cringe to say this but there definitely are youtubers that are going to do that well eventually um better than any of these tv writers who are on strike right now who need to be paid less i've ever done um <laughs> and i'm really excited for whenever that happens because i'm sure it's i'm sure it's going to happen within the next 10 years yeah i made a video about munchausen by proxy uh, mm -hmm. And I talked about, this was a couple years ago, I talked about gypsy and cases like that. It's a very interesting disease. It's led to a lot of controversy because it's kind of hard to convict around. Because if it is, in fact, a mental illness, then how culpable are people for enacting on it, you know? Right. Uh, but at the same time, it is an immediate act of guilt, right? Because there's, there's no way someone can have it and not manipulate or hurt others around them. So, I don't know, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird area for like legality and is it recognized in the dsm so hold, i forget i talked about it in my video it's something like it's recognized in britain but not the u.s or vice versa mm -hmm. uh, because like munchausen syndrome is definitely recognized but by proxy it's debated in like medical communities if it's real or not if i remember right it's like america doesn't recognize it uh in the dsm but like or maybe they did for an edition, but then took it out the next, something like that. It's it's highly debated, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that stuff is always changing with psychologists, and uh, psychology is kind of a weird science because it's it's more qualitative than quantitative. Um, whereas yeah. for an actual yeah. disease and symptoms, we're not. I'm not saying it's not real, but for a traditional disease that's like a physical ailment, you can track it with symptoms. But for something that's mental, it's much harder to pin down what exactly is going on. Yeah. But it's very very interesting. Super super interesting. Yeah. I would uh. I mean, I'm sure this already exists, but I would love to see a YouTuber who covers like, here's this disease, here's 10 examples of it, here's what we can glean from it, here's medical controversies around it. If anybody knows who does that on YouTube consistently, I would love to see their channel because that sounds super good. I'm oh, sorry, I think, did you cut out or are you just... Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can now. What's up? Internet went out for a second, my bad. Um, that's just weird. It's just psychology like that changes all the time. Uh, like you said, it's very qualitative, which is why before I started YouTube, my plan was to go to like psychology or psychiatry. Yeah, I've mentioned it. Can you hear me now? I can. Hold on. I, I'm just going to call your phone. Maybe that'll be better. Okay, <laughs> that works. Okay. <laughs> Yo, um, now that you have my docs, you're officially on the list. <laughs> Could be like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've told people that I'm married, yeah. That's cool. Um, I don't know if I, I know Kayla was in the chat. For Mardi Gras, Brandon is come is planning to come down there um, and do some, do some content, so that should be pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'm excited. He's done videos before where he goes down there and like makes out with some of the ratchet drunk people during Mardi Gras. Um, <laughs> so I'm curious to see what that's going to be. Um, I'll try to refrain from engaging too much with that side of it. But, you know, you never know. You never know what you're going to get into there. Um, it, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Isn't um, isn't he bringing like his grandpa or something? Papa, yes, he's bringing Papa, who who himself is very much like Brandon in that way, where he's just uh, very open to do pretty much anything. Um, okay. Yeah, so it should be it should be interesting. Yeah, Papa, man, I, when I met that guy in person, some crazy. He has this like crazy girlfriend who started like touching up on. I don't remember if it was me or someone else, but she started just like hitting on them in front of Brandon's grandpa and talking about how young and like leaf their physique is. And I was just like, bro, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I've had enough of this. Um, she's like, you're so young. You're so toned. It's like, bro, bro, you're 73. Stop. Where, where's your kids, bro? Where's your grandkids? Go make an apple pie or something. Insane. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good time. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I've never done anything Mardi Gras or anything like that, so I'm passively scared. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. After that, did you still want to go out to? Um, I know we talked about going to San Antonio with a uh, Brandon and um, Donut Operator. Do you still want to do that after that? Yeah, I'm down for it. 
for it for sure. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'll I'll work with you behind the scenes to get tickets, and I'll make sure to post our flight details so people can swat us like Ice Poseidon. Yeah, yeah. Be, uh, be sure that you put out the, like the flight number and everything. Yep. Be we'll be streaming fun. from the gate. Hey guys, I'm here with Wendigoon at gate A4 <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia, and today we're gonna be seeing how long it takes to get swatted. Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Beast. Today we're gonna be speed running, swatting, and wasting law enforcement resources. Be sure to spend the most amount of money possible. Make sure they get the the tank, the armored car, to the airport on the runway so no planes can take off for three hours. How much airline money can we waste? Fuck Delta. They delayed my flight last time. What's up, guys? We're going to be doing this for charity, by the way. Shout out Tre Trevor Project. Shout out Chris or Mr. Beast. They're going to be in the video. Yeah, it should be. It should be good. Um, Cool. All right. Well, I won't hold you for too much longer, but appreciate you calling in. Good luck with your work stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You too. Take care. Take care. See you, bro. All right. That's the Wendigoon. That's the Wenda scoop, some may say. What's a granny's at? I'll eat her apple pie. Good idea. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. Yeah.